Uh, next, we will hear from Hil Hillary Levy Friedman, the president of the Rhode Island National Organization for Women. Thank you so much for having me here today in my capacity as president of the Rhode Island chapter of the National Organization for Women. But most importantly, I want to thank the coalition members, but also so many of you in this room, uh, for both starting, continuing, and supporting this important fight for reproductive freedom. So since 1967, the repeal of all abortion laws has been a cornerstone of NOW's agenda. While 1973's Supreme Court decision invalidating all state laws that restrict abortion, in many states, like ours, these laws have not been officially removed from the books. As abortion rights have been eroded in states like Rhode Island over the past four decades, at the same time we've, me we've seen an ascendant women's movement develop to combat this issue and other issues related to reproduction and women's rights more generally, particularly in the recent past. Why? Well, of course, the 2016 presidential election was a major turning point here. So in what ways have we seen a change? So in May 2017, the Women in Politics Institute at American University conducted a survey that focused on how women engaged in politics both before and after Donald Trump's inauguration. These findings confirm what many of us in Rhode Island have experienced directly. So 47% of women who identify as Democrats have communicated about politics on social media, and 39% have signed a letter or petition since Trump became president. Prior to the 2016 election, though, those numbers were quite different. They were 10 and 11% respectively. So that means that nearly four times as many women today are engaging as individuals but this coalition, and if you look around this room, we can see just how powerful we can be when we come together as a group as well. Now, the same survey reveals that nationally, women are most likely to engage on issues like defunding Planned Parenthood and repealing, repealing Obamacare, um, again, showing that Rhode Island women and men um, are right on the right track in terms of what's happening nationally. But I have to note that based on this coalition's planned legislative agenda, we are actually set to lead the nation, especially when it comes to efforts to clean up our law books to be sure that women's choices are properly protected. Now, as reproductive freedom remains a cornerstone of Rhode Island now and women's groups more generally, other issues have gained increased visibility recently. So for example, we have the current iteration of the Me Too movement related to sexual harassment, and most recently, we've seen increased attention on the need for real reform when it comes to protecting young women from sexual assault, especially by teaching about consent in the wake of the USA Gymnastics sexual abuse scandal, which I have to point out is the biggest sex abuse case ever seen in American sports before, and that's already sometimes forgotten. So while now has been at this fight for over half a century, it is amazing to see the meteoric growth of grassroots organizations like the Women Project, which Jordan so eloquently described the work that they've been doing today. Together, we can all ensure that women in today's Rhode Island and in the future will have a choice about their own bodies so that they can then make choices about other wish issues, knowing that their reproductive rights and freedom are protected. Thank you. Thank you. 